Hi, Sportster Paul here. We're with Solid Cam, Cam Package, Computer Aided Manufacturing. It makes G code to run your milling machine or lathe or whatever. This is the first impression. My first impression is love and hate. And hate's too strong a word. It's love and exasperation. Love, what a great company. What the salespeople are great. The support is unbelievable. You know, they're, hey, we'll set up a meeting and they got a fantastic website. They've got uh, tons of videos, all these various YouTube videos to help you learn. And that's kind of the exasperation part of the equation. It's very complicated. They've kind of picked up that master cam heaviness or complication. And I'm a non machinist, new user, engineer, not a machinist. But, you know, this is the fourth or fifth cam program I've worked with. And I still had a little bit of startup problems or, or initial problems. And that's what's interesting. Once you get to making operations, all of these programs are so similar. You get a bunch of dialog boxes. You click, 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 and you get out of it. Some have some slightly better things. Some have some slightly worse. The problems I had were with setting up the coordinate system and the part and things like that. So let's go up there and take a look. Here's SolidWorks. I've got it running. I've turned on the add-in where uh, this is solid cam right here. This is what you're paying for. And you know, the initial exasperation. Well, what do I do now? Well, you got to realize you go here. Don't click this one first or this breaks this button. Minor problem. Say new milling. And now it thinks and it gives me a new error message. It's not saved. Do you want to save it? Well, OK, that was nice. Did a bunch of thinking. And it gives you new milling part. And let's, is it wide enough? Let's see. OK. So now this is a big deal. This is one of the things, all the programs I'm looking at work inside of SolidWorks. And I want that because I want to use SolidWorks Cam, not Master Cam's Cam package in their standalone, or Visual Mill's Cam package in their standalone. I want to use my drawing and tools because that's what I've been doing for 20 years, and that's where I want to stay. The other advantage is it's a configuration management headache. If you have to make an IGS file to export from SolidWorks and then import that into your CAM package, and then it'll make its own file. And now you got three files to worry about. Are they coherent? SolidCAM does something I don't think anybody else does. So right here at the beginning, it says you want an internal part, which means everything gets stored inside the SolidWorks file. Or do you want an external part? And what that does is make a zip file where it takes your original part, puts it in, copies it inside the zip file, makes another uh, solid file that, that's like the box, the stock box, uh, a whole bunch of toolpath, a whole other directory, all this stuff. And it's a PRZ. Z stands for zip. You can rename it to ZIP and look inside and see what kind of stuff they're doing. OK, it's going to at least double the, the file size just because you got two copies of your drawing now of your part. And then their stuff, when I do it inside, like my 189 kilobit part got up to, I think, four or 500 kilobits. One of the, I don't know, is this a feature or a bug? One of the issues with internal, if you open it up and say, yeah, open up the cam part two as well, uh, it, you can make changes and say, oh, I didn't really want to do that. And you say, OK, just close. It will not prompt you anymore to say save or exit without saving because you got this cam thing running alongside it. It just closes and the file dates updated and that could be a real disaster. Now, if when you double click on the part, you know, when you go to open it, the SolidWorks part that's got this cam stuff in it, if it's it asks you and I wondered why they did that. You know, well, there's this cam package. Do you want to open that? Well, yeah. If you don't do that, well, then you can, you know, make changes, close. It'll ask you, do you want to save it? Do you not want to save it? But the really interesting thing, once again, I'm not sure if I like this or not. You can say, no, don't open that one. And then you can do this again and open a whole new camp. So you could have, you know, this kind of machining or, you know, Hodge machining and Kitamura machining. You could have multiple cam outputs inside one SolidWorks file. And of course, the file is going to get pretty big doing that. So like I say, I'm not sure this is good or bad. It freaked me out when I made changes. Oh, I don't want that and closed and it updated the file date. 
So you got to be aware of that if you, you know, once again, have configuration management worries. The, my deal, we're going to do it internal. This is where they're saying, okay, we're going to make a cam part. We're going to call it, you know, this. So I, I'm not sure if they let you rename it. Let's not dwell. This is going to take long enough to get through this. We're going to get, if we're lucky, we'll get one tool path. You say yes. Turns it on its side for, I guess, this is the, they want Y up. I don't know. Now. This is my exasperations. I want part zero on the corner of the stock. Okay. So before I make the coordinate system, I thought, well, go to stock first. Here's the problem. If you do stock first, all you can do, you know, you, you select it here and it knows a solid. And I think it puts the size in. No, but the green box shows it's made stock to size. And then is it a little bit bigger? Yeah, it's a little bit bigger by here, but this is the same exact problem as SolidWorks cam by CamWorks. There's no way to put overall sizes. I don't call Midwest Metals and say, I want, I want stock my part size plus a tenth of an inch. You know, are you crazy? I want four by five by three or, you know, normal even sizes that the stock comes in. They don't let you pick it that way if you start with stock. So let's get out of here. Do it the way, you know, and coordinate system is listed first, right? So, okay, we're going to do a coordinate system. What all this, all you're trying to do is find a part zero or work zero, if you prefer that term. It was select face. You got to kind of read through all this and there's big dialogue boxes. They're telling you what they want you to do. Select that face. That is established. You know, I'm going to want it in the vice like this. Solid jaw back here. Uh, movable jaw device here. Part zero, well, on the stock up here, but let's at least get close. So we selected this face, so it's happy, right? Now it wants an origin. Well, I can't put it on the stock. It won't let me, so let's put it back here, which is at least back in the part. Like all of these programs, it guesses. It uses the global world coordinate, world coordinate system. So then you go flip around Z twice, once, twice. Now this is going to be like my Avid Benchtop Pro. Beautiful little machine, very stiff. It's a small router, really built solid, so you can machine aluminum. Some guys even try steel. So now it's oriented, you know, because I want it in the vise like this, uh, like this. So positive X is to the right, positive Y is to the back, Z is up. So I think we're done here. It gave us the green check, which means it's happy. So you say, okay, now it gives you this, and this befuddles me, right? Coordinates data. Coordinate system is a plane and a point in the orientation. Might even be, you know, radial and vectors, but that's all it is. What you're really doing is making this giant data structure. And yeah, the plane and the point and the directions are in there, like we just did. But all this other stuff is in there. The tool start level, the clearance level, upper part level, lower part level, uh, radials, if you got a four axis, I guess. Rear, meaning I, under, I, I assume the bottom of the part. And it's kind of auto-populated. It's smart enough. This part happens to be one inch big. And since our origin is here, it's saying, well, the part upper level is zero, part lower level is minus one. Figure they're smart people. Let's just accept it. But it's going to burn us later. Watch. So you say, okay. It thinks. It thinks. Gives us all this. It gives us this, you know, don't do any. I thought it didn't do anything. What you can do is rename set up. Let's do it this way. Top setup. So now, now, you know, it's the top setup. This is in the vice, and that's what I'm going to do. You say, OK. Now, they don't tell you this until you get into it. The green check boxes are your happy boxes. You want all three green check boxes, then you're going to start making operations. So the stock, it's not checked yet. But the target, I assume, because we clicked on it when we made our coordinate system, it's smart enough to know, okay, that's the solid model. Because I think this will work inside assemblies. When you make an external file, it treats it like an assembly, which can be great if you want to have fixtures or other stuff. I'm still deciding, you know, if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So now we go stock. Notice now it's different dialogue. It lets you pick stock size. I wish this box here selection was blue because in SolidWorks, a blue box means do something with it, put something in there, or it doesn't know what to do. And I went around a few times because you, you select it. Okay, now it knows solid one. If you select it again, it poofs away. 
If you select it, okay, now it knows solid one and then say, oh no, no, I don't want it relative to the model. This is that same like SolidWorks cam where you, you gotta put, you know, get a calculator out. It's easy on this one because it's three by four by one and a half, but you might have some weird part size. You don't wanna be adding and subtracting so you get a nice even stock. You wanna use stock size. Now watch, bam, it poofs that selection again. Selection has gone to nothing. So this was a couple of times around, okay? Select it. All right, good. Now we now we know what we want to do. And this is the beauty thing. It's like Mastercam and Bobcad and the others. 0.5, we want the stock bigger because this uh, I'm making this part precision. Everything precision. So there we go. It's all cool. Then you go down here. And because I don't, I want more meat on the bottom than the top, in the Z, positive Z, I've learned, you go 0.1, change focus, and there you go. It's got a tenth of an inch on the top, four tenths of an inch on the bottom. Now, the other headache, what are these boxes all about? Turns out, if you're ever going to want to stick this origin up on the corner of the stock, and there's no way to do that unless you add a box to the CAD model. And it actually goes, I think even if you don't do this, it clutters your part tree. So add, so now you see those little asterisks, you know, th these points here that you can attach stuff to. Okay, so now there's something that you'll be able to refer to. I think we're ready to go. Stock, yeah, it's fine name. Go, okay. Everything's happy. But now we want to move that. So go back to stock. And I think it's all ready to go. I think, where do you select the stock size, box size? Where do you select? Oh, no, no. We went back in the stock. Wrong. Back in the coordinate system. See what I mean about getting turned around? And yeah, oh, this is important. I'm an occasional user. I'm a prototype person. So I'm not using this eight hours a day, seven days a week. So I need something that I haven't used it for a week, a month. I go back and I can kind of figure it out. Now, see, once again, oh well, no, wait, I, I want to edit that. Well, you got to go down here and say edit. Then it goes here and you're like, no, no, I don't care about all this data. You got to find this little box, edit coordinate system. Finally, and this took a little exasperation, select the face again. You got to start like from scratch. Select that face. Now it knows what plane. Now it lets you pick the origin on the stock. And people must not do this because watch how goofy this is going to be. Once again, it reverts to the world coordinate system. So you flip around twice. That's not the end of the world. I'm not going to complain about arbitrary decisions. You just programmers, software people have to make. So then you say, OK. It thinks it's re zero and everything gives us this again. You don't have to add anything. You just say, OK, you like the name. Everything's green. You say, OK. What do we got? We're 13 minutes into this. See, we don't even have a tool path yet. So there it is. And see, this is the other thing. Half of the tree's taken up. We don't have one operation, but you can make that a little better like this. But stock is here. Oh, that's good. But then this concept updated stock and updated from what or why. But that's where you can check and turn it on and notice it's in the wrong place. It's in the place from that first coordinate system. This wasn't as you know, it's exasperating, but not as bad. What did we do? We have to, okay, go back into stock. That was the trick. Go back into stock, and I think you just exit. You're in stock, you're out of stock, and yeah, now it's in the right spot. But to learn that, you know, it was a lot of clicking. So now we have stock. Oh, material. I looked and looked for material. I don't think it uses material on regular toolpaths, only their eye machining. So what is it? Go double click on machine? No, that gives you, <laughs> I got four monitors, so stuff is open and you can't see all of this. See, everything, all kinds of stuff. Powerful, but <laughs> I'd rather have simple. No, okay, it was this one. You double click and this gets you back like into that whole start stuff. And what were we trying to do? I machine. See, this is what was exasperating machining data, probably because of me clicking around trying to learn, this was closed. So every time I looked, where do I put material in? Where do I put material in? 
This being closed, I'd see eye machining. It's like, no, no, I'm not going to do any eye machining on this first impression. I just want to do regular, plain, hard corner tool paths. Well, open it up. Machine database. Well, I don't really care about that. Oh, here we go. Now look at this. Aluminum 100 BHN. All I can imagine is BHN is brittle hardness. But then you'd think you'd have Rockwell C for the alloy steels, but... Obviously, a material scientist decided what aluminum should be called, not a machinist, because 6061 is where I want to be. Now, one thing they added, even the sales guy didn't know, use SolidWorks material. You can't click it. Now, you get back out of it, go over to SolidWorks, double-click on SolidWorks material. Did I get it? Double-click again. Come on, SolidWorks material. Edit material. I guess, see, everything works a little different. And SolidWorks, bless their heart, speaks normal. Aluminum alloys in order. 6060, oh, 6063. That, that's like architectural stuff, stuff you buy at Home Depot. T6 is the heat treat. That's what I see a lot of people use. I don't know how important all this is. Apply, close. Now it says that. Now we can go back here. Remember that we double-clicked up here, not all the other places you can double-click. And where was it? Down here. And now it says use SolidWorks material is lit up, and you can do it. And it gives us a name that we can remember. So that's good. So it's 6061. Hopefully that does something. I mean, I hope it doesn't confuse it. I assume they've got a translation table. So now, 15 minutes into our half-hour show, we finally have a material. Go here. Does it nag us anymore? Probably not. Okay. Updated. Check our stock. See, you're always, because you're not sure. It's so complicated. You're not sure. Settings. I don't even want to get into that. Tools. I don't want to get into it. Setup. What, with this little icon? I haven't figured that out. It, you know, they're so helpful. The, 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 the support guy's like, look, if you don't want to look at the videos, that's okay. I'll set up a go to meeting and I will sit down with you and give you a personal tutor for whatever you want to do. Thing is, I don't want things so complicated. I need personal tutoring. I didn't need it for anything other than Mastercam. I had to start looking at videos, doing all kinds of stuff. This program, I had to look at videos. And I looked at some videos that did this stuff automatic. And I said, oh, they're cheating, right? They're doing a demo. And then, then the, the support person, great guy, he's like, no, no, start at this video. That's the one that'll show you all this. So, okay, we're finally ready to make an operation. No, you don't click Setup. You click Operations, Add Milling Operation, Face. Now you get their dialog boxes. So this is it's clean design. User interface people think making it bigger and, and spaced out makes it simpler. It doesn't. It makes it more complicated, but... My real problem is they don't label anything down here because it took a while to figure out what to do. But for now, let's just go. Same thing. Where do I start? Okay, geometry. How? What? Where? When? Well, what you're supposed to do, stock-based boundary, except for facing. You know, If you put in part-based boundary, now it'll let you go select geometry. But you don't want to do that. This is like the use stock checkbox in Visual Mill. You just say that, and now it's going to be smart enough, instead of just doing the top face of your part like a pocket and leaving the stock up around the edges, it'll do the whole top. It'll, it'll face off. It'll deck the entire top. Tool. Okay, this was a problem. First thing I did, uh, let's see, select, right? Okay, this is straightforward. Select a tool. Gives you this dialog box. And it's like, well, there are no tools. Okay, because this part has its own tool file, right? That's the way you're supposed to do it. Well, I see the green thing here. Nothing's labeled. I see the green thing. My eye goes to the green thing. Oh, okay. End mills. Okay, I'll choose an end mill. No, you're in the end mill design section, which is great if you want to spend your time you know, designing end mills. Look at how beautiful this is. You highlight that. It lights it up here. Highlight that. Fantastic work. But it was the help guy said, so you don't have, because it's a demo, and this isn't a demo. This is, they gave me a 60-day full trial post G-code, and the guy said, we're treating you like you're on support. So you got to love that. 
I'm going to delete out of this. Will tool be deleted? Yes. He explained, no, what you want is here. Import tools. Now you're cooking with gas. Center drills happens to come up. He recommended, oh, solid cam master tools for aluminum. Funny thing is, I think I didn't have one of the tools I needed by the end. I've been through this part like 15 times trying to show you. I happen to know tool 25 is the one we want. Can you? No, that's not it. Oh, gosh. This one. So you make everything big and wide. Put it up above my headshot so you folks can see most of what's going on. Tool number 25. Same deal. Nothing's labeled. I figure green. What this will do if you just hit that, it will load all, what is it, 400 tools in here? 734 tools will go in your part. I imagine that might make the file size bigger. No, you don't want to hit this at all because it's, you know, you, did you want to start at the next tool, all that? You want to be over here, but you don't want to hit the slightly less green or much less green thing. You want to go here and say next free tool number, which should be tool one. It did it, but it doesn't tell you it did it, but that's okay. I'm going to a little red arrow over here under my headshot and going, okay, tool one, end mill, quarter inch, cutting length. Oh, I picked number 25 because it needs 125 because when we go and do the perimeter of this, you're not supposed to have the smooth part of, of an end mill up against spinning up against your part. Chips can get in there, it can cause damage, surface finish problems. So I need at least 1.02. So this is the cool end mill for me to use. Now I think, see, and okay, now, now do I save, import, where am I? Okay, now you're over on the right side of the dialog box. Can you folks see that? Now you're over here with, let's see, select, no, save. And I think it gets us out, no, exit, right? All right, so you have a tool, except it hasn't selected it. See, this, this is it. Didn't this say select? Okay, that bounced me back. So many ways to do things. <laughs> levels, I think it's smart enough to know the levels. This is what I like. It's like visual mill. You can select upper level and go pick it on your model. You can select face step, pick it. But I think it's smart enough. See, we defined our coordinate system on top of the stock. So it thinks the upper level is zero. And then this is a little tricky, right? It's not minus 0.01 down because they call it depth. So positive depth is down, right? So 0.1, that's all cool. I'm not going to take multiple cuts. Then now here's a great thing. Gosh, I wish Visual Mill worked like this. It doesn't poof the dialog box. All this stuff here, see, save, save and calculate, save and calculate with related operations. That's what I've been doing. It sounds more comprehensive. Save parallel calculate and exit. I don't know, is that multi-core? I don't know what's going on. Save parallel calculate and copy. If you're doing like holes and you're going to center drill, drill, tap, you could copy the thing. And then this one is save parallel calculate and copy and simulate. There's where the simulator hides. This is make G code, G code of time. All right. So I'll pull it off to the side so you can see. And I will say save and calculate with related operations there. Now, this is that thing about the coordinate system. I did the defaults. I didn't know what else to do. Upper level is above coordinate sys upper level. OK. And it says don't ask again. But this is how software people torment you. They make it sound, oh, that's not, just don't ask again. And then after 10 hours of work, oh, well, you dismissed the upper level. So I'm going to leave this just to torment us for the rest of this session. Upper level, OK, say OK. And there it is, right? And the dialog box didn't go away. So now you can do simulate, upper level, see, torment me. Then go here. Oops, it's, it's so fast. Go here. And there it is. And this is a more basic. And I, I thought, well, this is better than nothing. I like it better than the module works one that, that Bobcad and, Sol and uh, Mastercam use. No great shakes. And because I'm paranoid, been burned so many times by so many different programs and so many different software engineers, rather than just saying exit, I don't want to make a copy of the face. I always say save and exit, just in case, you know, once again, torment me. Now, when it says coordinate system, 
Oh, okay, you see the box and it's bothering you. You go here, see how they've cluttered your tree. You go here and hide it. Now you don't got to look at the stock box. Go back to solid cam. Oh, you want to change the name. Visual Mill, you just click on it right here and change the name. Here you've got to invoke it, bring it all up, come up here and say face, oops, face top. And save and exit, obviously. Save and exit right there. <laughs> Quite a system. So there it is. How far are we in? 25 minutes. Now, once I actually got that to go away, that save coordinate system. Oh, it does, it does the Mastercam thing, always pushing the tree off so you can't see it. But unlike Mastercam, they give you a scroll bar so you can get back there. With Mastercam, what I had to do is open it up and then reclose it. All right. So you think, we got to open this up. Geometries. This is our top setup, right? It's an awful big tree for only having one operation. Let's see if we can do it before we leave. Because I'm just going to want to, oh, oh, no, no, no. Before we do that, let's show you face top, highlight it. This is the love. And this is big love. This simulator is fantastic. It's, they say it's in beta. First, I panicked, right? Well, why is it? What's the purple? That, that, is that the top of the stock? That's because I happen to have the compare on. They say F sub X because programmers can argue for decades about what it should be named. And it has nothing to do with anything. It's the compare button. Turn compare off and you'll be happier at the beginning. There's our tool. Let's do our thing. Zim. Nice. And there's ways to set it, you know, so it goes around like, like Visual Mill tells the default, doing circular. No big deal. Here's, this is now the compare function. Bright green means it's under a thousandth of an inch. It's between minus a thousandth and plus a thousandth. And I believe there's ways to set all that. Here's your box, right? You can look at different corners. Fantastic. Here's all the setups. If you don't want it to fly out, if you want it to work inside SolidWorks, go ahead. Now, not as bad as the simulator in Bobcad that works completely different for, for panning and zooming. This one, has, for zooming in and out the, with the scroll wheel, it's assumed the SolidWorks base can, you know, the way SolidWorks worked, except SolidWorks lets you reverse it. And I do that so it works like my TurboCAD, where you don't get the choice. Okay. It doesn't honor that. So if you reverse your zoom wheel in SolidWorks, well, it'll be backwards here. But this is just such a fantastic accomplishment, right? This, this by the time we get to the tapping, this was the one. And I, I learned I could do it in, in um, Visual Mill, but they don't put the taper on the tap and stuff. But I could, with this one, I'm confident enough to know the tap isn't running into the angled part of, of the tap drill hole and breaking the tap. It's like, no, I want to stop it a little. Because nothing, you know, SolidWorks, these holes are 0.38 in SolidWorks. Nobody seems to obey that. When I say drill 0.44, I did find it might be in this one where do you want to go to the tip of the tool or the center of the round part of the tool. But here we are. We're happy. Let's see if we can fix. Let's, let's do a calculate. It's not regen. Operation calculated again. Oh. It's happy now. Maybe it, maybe somehow it healed. See, when a program's hot, complex enough, now it, now it complains. All right. So to get rid of that complaint, it's not saved. You want to save? Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, coordinate sys. Where else would you start? Right. Coordinate sys. Edit. There is no coordinate sys upper level. That phrase does not exist anywhere. And they don't use a complete sentence when they say upper level is, what is it, below, above? Coordinates this upper level. Upper level of what? Finish the sentence. The only thing I saw was part upper level. And it's a tenth of an inch down. And I assume some of the tool path, I mean, it's not that the tool was way up. I think once when I did it by mistake, I think if we say 0.5 there, minus, no, not minus 0.5, because that'll be down inside the part. That'll definitely confuse it. I think plus 0.5. And what else this changes? How much crisis this causes everywhere else? I don't know. Please review your stock size. Let's see what happens when we look at the stock. Okay. I touched that dialog box. It wants to warn me. That's all okay. 
but I have to use a Logitech mouse, which has right left on the scroll wheel. For, it's a gamer mouse. So that's how I could move that thing back without using the bar down here. Updated stock. We don't want to look at it. Now what happens if we... Oh, it, it wants to regen. That's what the dot meant because it knew we changed something basic. Well, that's good. Calculate. Upper levels of... No, see? Same problem. Face top toolpath. So we conf, oh, we confused it here. Upper level. All right. Upper level is zero. Face depth is a tenth. Now it should make toolpaths. Yeah, see them? All right. Fine. And like I said, what did I do telling it, you know, a lie? It's not a bad thing necessarily, but it's a confusing thing. And I don't want to be confused. I got enough problems. So there we are. 30 minutes. We're done. One toolpath. Took a half an hour. Uh, the love part. Now I got to admit, it's this setup that I found so exasperating. Now it's pretty much love, right? And they do have eye machining, and I played with that. That'll be, you know, a few shows down the road. But I went through this whole part, did the tapping. Like I said, this one I was confident of the tapping. And you, what do you pay for that, you know? Your simulator telling you that you can trust you were not going to break a tap out on the shop floor. Big deal. So if you can deal with all the rigmarole, this is a great program. And like I say, what a fantastic company. Really impressed by them. So that's it for today. We will come back, you know, a couple days with our second. We'll, we'll start going through it, doing the perimeter, doing the pockets. We're just going to do conventional. We don't do eye machining this round because we didn't do it on any of the other cam packages that we evaluated. For now, have fun with your cam projects. We'll catch you in a bit.